All right, so we are here with the one and only Clarissa Shields. We're gonna be talking with you. I see you are preparing um, tough as you as you always do. Are you ready for the big night? I'm always ready for a fight. You know, a good little 10 rounds of action, of fighting. Uh, to, and then for it to be here up in Detroit at Little Caesars Arena, the first fight ever. Yes. I'm just super excited they chose me to open uh, boxing up at Little Caesars. I'm also trying to imagine that as well because, you know, you are back here in your hometown uh, at Little Caesars Arena on a big stage. Um, you got the nervous bugs or you, you know? Well. What, what has the preparation been like? Yeah, well, I'm not, um, I feel like I'm in my backyard because I'm right, I'm only an hour, I'm, I'm born in Flint, but I'm only an hour from Flint. So it's going to feel like home when everybody from Flint, Detroit, all over America come to this fight. Mm -hmm. um, I do not get the jitterbugs when I have a fight. I don't get butterflies. I'm actually excited and I want to do it. Mm. And... Coach is telling me in the uh, telling me in the locker room to sit down and stop dancing and stop being so happy because um, I I will waste all my energy dancing back there because I'm just excited before the fight. Yeah. That's why I go out to the fight and I'm dancing all the time because I'm just excited to be there. I'm excited to show my skills in front of the fans to show how hard I've been training. Preparation for this camp has been different than all my other camps. Yeah. You know, I thought that my camp with Savannah Marshall would, would, would be harder because, you know, she was a bigger girl, 12-0, yeah. 10 knockouts, and they were saying she could knock me out. So I thought that I, could, that I would train my hardest for that camp. Mm -hmm. And then they announced this fight, and I got in a training camp, and then I, I believe halfway through camp, probably about two or three weeks in, I said, I'm definitely working harder than I worked last camp. I saw you out there in the ring. I don't want to be in the same ring with you. <laughs> I think we're already close enough. <laughs> but, I mean, that preparation is big. And talk about the, the pressure that the lead-up to fights bring, right? Because, I mean, even right now, um, there's been a change in um, the lineup. Um, yeah. the, the, your opponent, who you were preparing, I'm sure, to uh, fight against, uh, has been disqualified. Uh, yeah. First, you got any uh, reaction? Um, to this latest news? Um, well, with all my undisputed championships, I'm making my business to sign up with bottle testing, and that's random drug testing to make sure that me and my opponent both play by the rules. You know, boxing, I'm putting my life on the line already, so I don't want to put my life on the line with somebody taking steroids. Tested um, positive for a banned substance, and so yeah. now out of the fight, um, you're, you're preparing for now a new opponent. Um, yeah, I'm preparing for Maricela Cornejo. She's ranked number one for the WBC, WBO, and IBF. Um, she's, she was preparing for a fight herself. She's got way more fights than me. I have 13 fights. Uh, Maricela Cornejo is, has 21. She's 16 wins, five close decision losses that she's had. She's fought for world, for world championships, I believe, at least three, four times now. She's come up short every time. Mm -hmm. So... Um, she's been waiting on an opportunity to get her chance against me, and now we're here. And now we're here. You've done a good read on your, your new opponent, but when you look at now the, the change and the dynamics, uh, does that present any um, new sense of pressure to take no. on? It's just going to show me how great I am to figure somebody out with less time. Mm. The fight is in, I believe, nine days. Um, I've already seen her fight before. We're going to watch some more film, but I, um, I don't have, you know, eight weeks to watch film of her, so we only got about a week. And uh, I'll have it figured out by the time June 3rd comes, and I'll go in there and, and do the same thing I was going to do to Hannah Gabriels, and that's put her on her ass. Talk to me about what this means for home, the residents there, uh, fans there, who have someone like you to look up to, uh, Tell me about what this means in representing um, home, the city of Flint. Well, I've already represented Fly City. I, that's why you see the blue hair, because <laughs> we still got the water crisis going on. Mm. It still exists. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to still ship those pallets of water, ship them to the churches, come here and give out water mm. to Flint, because we still need it. Mm -hmm. And it's still uh, families and property that need water. Yeah. Now, speaking on just, you know, um, inspiring the kids 
That's why we have our Night of a Thousand Stars initiative. Mm -hmm. We are going to bring a thousand kids from around Detroit area, Flint area, Pontiac and Saginaw, and bring all the kids to the fight so they can see me live in person fight for my undefeated championship. And um, just know that they can, that it can be them. Mm -hmm. They can, I, I, I think a representation is everything. Mm -hmm. So to be able to represent not only being a Flint star, but being a young girl from Flint who grew up poor, who grew up in poverty, um, you know, sexually abused and didn't have, you know, such a great upbringing, but that's the butt part, but God, but, mm. but God put me in this position to be who I am and what I am. And he didn't do it just so I can say I'm a great boxer. He wants me to inspire those who feel hopeless, mm. you know, who feel faithless that they, that they can't make it out because Flint and some of these areas have such dark clouds around them sometimes. And every day you can choose to go left or you can choose to go right in your life. And I'm hoping that um, with them coming to my fight, that they'll choose to go right. Mm -hmm. They'll say Clarissa Shields had these same um, obstacles to choose from, these same decisions, and she chose the right decision. She chose to go to basketball practice, go mm -hmm. to boxing practice, go to track practice, go to after school program. Mm -hmm. She chose these things, but faced with, oh, let's go smoke, let's go drink, let's go rob, mm -hmm. let's go steal. And I, I just want to be able to show them that your life is, it can be whatever you want it to be. It's all about your decisions, mm -hmm. you know? So that's just what I want to do. And being from Flint gives me the perfect um, platform, give me the perfect voice mm -hmm. to reach so many children wor like worldwide. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, boxing just gives me a big, give me a big platform to where I can change lives. So mm -hmm. being, being from Flint has made me rock solid tough and um, just yeah. very resilient. Yeah. Talk about the space that we're in right now um, and where you've been training uh, and what, what this place means for you. So we are here at Tony Harris and Jim Super Bad Fitness. Uh, we all know that Tony Harrison was WBC champ. Mm -hmm. He defeated Jermail Charlo. Um, he just the epitome of Detroit. I mean, people think that I talk trash. <laughs> well, I learned the thing from Tony Harrison. Right, right. <laughs> I learned a thing or two. Um, they always open up that gym for me to come train here. Um, everybody here is just so helpful from Miss Ali. To, to LJ Harrison, to Tony Harrison, to Alicia Baumgartner, who's also undisputed champ. Yeah. Everybody just super nice to me here, lets me use the space as I need to, uh, train in private, you know, and get ready for my fight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's like a big old family, so I enjoy coming here and kind of having to get away from Flint because all my family and my friends are there, and sometimes they can be a distraction when I'm getting ready for a fight because I can't go out to eat. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, like, how's that like? Like, like you're just the big celebrity in the family. That's, you know, they're like, that's my baby, or you know, yeah, wishing you well and chatting you on as their biggest fans. I'm sure. Yeah, but they don't understand how hard it is, you know, mm -hmm. of how how deep I have to focus yeah. to do what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it go over people's head that I'm not number one in America or number one in the continent. I'm number one boxer in the world. You know, and it's not many people who are number one in the world at what they do. So it takes a different kind of focus, a different kind of sacrifices, and everybody don't understand how hard I have to focus and um, how I can't, have, I can't have even 1% of distraction. And if everybody understood that, they could be around. But that's why I leave Flint, I go to Florida to train, I come here to Detroit, I go to Las Vegas and train with Floyd. Like I have to get in my, get in my zone and I don't think people really know what like a world championship number one in the world zone is because they never had to experience it. Yeah. I mean, you just threw that out there. You train with Floyd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, that's, what, what is that like? I mean, he called me the female TBE, so that's validation right there. Yes, I love that. <laughs> you know, I, I'm the greatest woman of all time. I'm the quote. Yeah. But, you know, when you got some, somebody who's 50, you know, who had a great, I mean, a great career made over, 200 million in his fights, just one fight. Absolutely. You know, um, that's inspiring to me that he even know my name, that he acknowledges me, mm -hmm. that he know where I'm from, he know my life story. Mm -hmm. um, he want to do some work and stuff together. To, to even, there are great boxers, but you have to be a great person for somebody to even recognize you in mm -hmm. that way. 
in that way. So I'm happy that we met, and then we both from Michigan. Yeah. You know, you're right from Grand Rapids, so the best boxers do come out of Michigan. It's yeah. proven. You got Floyd Mayweather, you got me. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it's just great. You know, he's been a big supporter. And if he wasn't fighting June 11th, he'll be here June 3rd. Yeah. You know, when you were at LCA mm -hmm. um, on fight night, tell me what it's going to be like when you, when you take on I can't on even imagine, honestly. When, when you take on the win. We're we just going to put it out there. Oh, when I win? Yeah, oh, well, I, listen, I say that all the time. I don't know why people be saying if. It'd be like if. That's what, exactly. If if was a fifth, we'd all be drunk, okay? <laughs> um, it's when. Yes, when, when I win. When you win. Yeah. That's um, what I want to be like. Well, you know what? I'm just looking forward to the actual walkout. You know, um, people don't know, and we're going to make a big announcement soon, but I'm being wrapped up by one of Flint, I mean, one of Detroit's legends. Okay? This girl is hard, core. Come on, you can give us a little something. something. I can't tease. I can't tease y'all like that. When y'all when y'all putting this out? When y'all releasing this? We're going to put it out next week, middle of next week. Oh, well, I can tell y'all then. So Cash Doll rapping me out. We love it. We love yeah, Cash Doll. Yeah, the Dow. baddest. Yes. You know, she rapping me out. And I'm just, like, so I've been in Little Caesars Arena yeah. when it was empty. Uh -huh. And I've seen just all the seats. And I've seen the banners. And I've seen my picture on the TV and stuff. You just had your vision. And I just looked at it and I said, I just can't wait to see what it's going to look like when this place is packed up. And I'm right there smack You're dead right in the there. middle. And everybody's got their eyes on me saying, what? What is the champ going to do? So I'm just excited that I'm excited for that part and then the walkout. And I'm just excited for the fight. I'm like scary strong right now. You know, like I'm yeah. kind of like I'm so strong right now that it's kind of scary to me. Wow. It's like, damn, you you strong for real. Yeah. So I'm just Not for real, for real. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, you you may hit somebody on accident and, you know, really, really hurt them. So See, you can't be out here playing. That's why I'm trying to take my little social distancing, you know, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit serious. You know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that. You're a little scared, scared, strong, yeah. strong, a little scared. Yeah. But when I win, I think I'll, that I'll be emotional. Hmm. You know, uh, 15,000 fans here in America. I just fought in front of 20,000, but it was in the UK. You know, when I walked out, they booed me. Um, they booed the national anthem. Um, throughout the ring, they chanted, oh, Savannah Marshall, you know. And then at the end of the fight, they chanted, poor Savannah Marshall, you know. And everybody was clapping and cheering for me. But now that I'm here in my hometown, they're going to be screaming and chanting for me. It's going to mean a lot to them when I win, a lot to Detroit, a lot to Michigan, a lot to Flint. And, um, I'm just happy that women's boxing actually got here in America. They've always given us chances overseas, mm -hmm. but here in America they said that we weren't valued, that we don't have fans. Um, people wouldn't buy tickets to our fights and stuff like that, which I knew was a myth. You know, I knew it was just sexist people saying that stuff, but the sexist people was the one who made the decisions. Mm -hmm. So I had to fight to make this happen yeah. and had to let everybody understand, like, this is a vision that God has given me, and he's already told me that, I can sell out a 15,000 seat arena, 20,000, 25,000, just give me the opportunity, yeah. find me an opponent, mm -hmm. and I'll get ready, and I'll promote it, and I'll, and it'll be great. Yeah. You know, but to actually have it here in Detroit at Little Caesars, I just think that uh, I'm going to be crying like a baby after I think. <laughs> I'm probably going to be crying and laughing. <laughs> well, we'll be there when you win. Thank you. Clarissa Shields, everybody. Flint's one and only. Michigan's one and only as well. Michigan Chronicles.